What's up everybody? This video today is about some of the things that I've learned of Android 18 in the month or so since Dragon Ball Fighters has come out. Everything that I see on the YouTubes is either a character introduction, which is just reading down the move list. I'll go through that too. Or it's just some, you know, level three touch of death combo video sequence and nothing in between. So I want to kind of go through a little bit of both and everything in between. Just the stuff that I know about the character, how to use her, some of the things you might not be aware of, and more practical day-to-day -day things, rather than just an intro or a master level course. Android 18's basic move list doesn't have anything out of the ordinary, except for her standing jab, which is a low. If you don't press anything else, you just stand there and press light attack, it's low, unlike most other characters, which is mid. So the only thing that really gives her is the ability to do two lows in a row. If you do a crouching light and then two standing lights, it'll be low, low, mid. So that can kind of throw people off, but that's the only real exception. Other than that, all of her normal attacks are pretty straightforward. She can do the crouching M, crouching medium into standing medium, or 2M5M, as you'll see in notation. Just like everybody else, she has that. Um, nothing else is different. Her heavies both cause the chase. Her 2H is the airborne, does the anti-air and all of that. So there's nothing else out of the ordinary in her normal attacks. Um, frame data is starting to come in little by little, and it seems that her jabs are 7 frame startup, which is not the fastest, but fast enough to function in a jab if you want to try to beat out pressure. If you know there's a gap in their pressure and you want to interrupt it, you do jab-jab into your combo that way. That way there's no chance of them interrupting you with a big slow attack. And because your jab-jab is a low, it can be a little disorienting sometimes, but that's it. Other than that, everything else she has is pretty straightforward. Two lights, two mediums, and the heavy, and all of that. Uh, as far as the airborne attacks go, they're also pretty typical. Her jumping heavy is the knockdown. That when you do it the certain way, will give you that skid into the ground, like most characters. And her jumping down heavy, or 2H, can smash and chase after, like most characters there. You can super dash, but she cannot jump cancel if she does it a second time. We'll get into that in the combo section later. Most characters have a way to incorporate another heavy attack in air juggles, and she doesn't. Uh, and yeah, because she's as simple as can be, most of her air combos can do light, medium, light, light, medium, light, and squeeze in some extra hits. But other than that, her normals are pretty straightforward. Medium's got a good range. The rest of them kind of don't. This is probably her best one, and her jumping medium is also pretty good. Other than that, she's got kind of stubby normals compared to some of the other characters, but they're good enough, and that medium kind of makes up for it. You can use it pretty well. So for Android 18 special moves, let's just take a look at them one by one. We'll start with the back grapple. This is a command throw that has a few uses, but mainly it's just to keep your opponent on guard during your pressure. Most of the offensive pressure in this game is just about, you know, poke, 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 throw a lot of assists, hit, you know, just throwing buttons at them one after another and then converting. Hers has another layer by being able to throw that command throw. If they're busy watching for your lows and overheads and cross ups, they need to be aware of that throw that exists. So the light version of this throw just does that, throws them into the ground, hits them. Change the position, nothing else happens. Small amount of damage. There's no variations or anything. It's just a, a, a tool to use during pressure. Once they get hit by that, they can tech. So you do have an opportunity to try to attack them again, but you, you don't really maintain full control after this. So the light version I don't think is all that good just because they can tech in any direction. I think the medium version is much better. Because you see that it calls in 17 to finish off the attack. And from that attack, you can do your super. Right on top of it, and that's guaranteed hit. So right away, spending a bar lets you get much more damage out of it. The same tech situation, so you don't really get offense. However, if you hold in the button, she will just throw them without 17 intervening. And what this does is let you do the combo yourself. Like that. She can throw them out of nowhere and you vanish behind and you'll get an entire combo that way. So spending one bar again lets you get so much more and you can end the combo however you want and keep going from there. Let you use your other assists, let you continue your pressure. So the medium version I think is probably the best just because of its ability to do that and get your own combo however you want. The heavy version does the same thing for the cost of one meter. 
and you have to super dash to catch them up in the air. They bounce up automatically, and you can super dash to finish your combo. But that's it. There's no other real variation to it. I feel like you're still better off just spending the one meter to combo the old-fashioned way. Depends on what you need. Depends on where you are in the match and what your meter situation looks like. Uh, and keep in mind, you cannot do the skid off of this one because you the, the way that the rules work for air juggles, you're not going to be able to do that hard sliding knockdown if you combo off of the heavy version of it. And again, you can hold it in and she won't call 17. So if you're near the corner, you get options that way. So I think overall the medium version is the best one because it lets you get the full combo out of it. But again, you don't get that sliding knockdown off of either of these. But they're still pretty good. You get combo damage, you get resets, and you get wake-up opportunities. So they're good for use in the middle of your pressure, not out in the open. If you just do that, they're going to be too busy jumping out of the way. You know, no one's going to stand still in this game long enough to get hit by that. You really need to just you know throw in the pressure and call the assists, and then do your command throw that way. Keeping in mind, they cannot be thrown during full blocks time. Like, for example, I'll set them to block... And you call them the Vegeta assist. Notice my throw goes right through them. They're in block stun, they cannot be thrown. So you can't really just spam it out there and get an unblockable throw. You sort of have to wait until that block pressure is over, then do it. When they're not really ready to adapt. So it's another layer to pressure, which is always nice in this game. This game is mostly oriented on lows and overheads and being able to cross up during the confusion and all that. So having a command throw is a nice little layer to add on top of it. 18's second special move is the support attack, where she uses 17 to complement the array of everything that she does. This is far and away her most important move. The things that it does are really widely varied, and they let her do some pretty cool things, both offensively and defensively. Uh, the first light version is just a single knee attack like that. Let me turn off block, I don't need that anymore. So single knee attack, sends them flying, and you can super after it. Can't really combo unless you happen to be in just the right spot. In fact, I don't even know if I can at all, even in the corner. They seem to be teching pretty well. But anyway, that's just the single hit version of it. It's just there. You can use that in pressure. When you're calling out your assists and everything, you can call it one of those and continue to go from there. The medium version, on the other hand, is much better. 17 comes out and delivers three hits, which you can easily combo from. Uh... All three hits will continue to bother the opponent, at which point you can dash in, follow up. You can call this and jump over them and try to cross up, all sorts of things. That easily is the best version of the pressure from the 17 assist, as well as in the air. He can also be called into the air, and he will drop down to where they are and attack them. And if he's in the air, he delivers two hits instead of the three. I want to show you what it looks like up there. Like that. He delivers two hits and knocks them back to the ground. This again will not cause that slide, so they tech when they hit the ground. But this is the only one that will change his position. If you're in the air when you call the light version, 17 attacks on the ground. If you're in the air when you call the medium version, 17 will attack them wherever they are, either on the ground or in the air. And he either gets three hits on the ground, like that, or two hits in the air, like that. This is easily the best one. Has additional combo potential, great pressure potential. You can call the medium one from the in the air and then dash over them. All sorts of things you can do with this. This is the best tool that she has offensively, defensively, and everything. Uh, the heavy version of this doesn't really look like much at first, but what he's actually doing is blocking your opponent's assists. If your opponent calls an assist while 17 is standing there talking shit, he will immediately teleport above them and give them one of these. They'll take damage and they'll go back out. Effectively stops the opponent's assist, but not entirely. Uh, Trunks, for example, will beat it when he comes in. Trunks comes in with the Fight the Future attack, which has such a fast, huge hitbox, it hits you before 17 even gets to him. He'll get hit by it and he'll take the damage, but it doesn't stop him from attacking you. So it's not foolproof, it is just meant to restrain your opponent's assist a little bit. That it does, but it's not 100% foolproof. So think about it in terms of just trying to get, you know, a little bit of a breather from an opponent. If you stop their assists, they won't be able to, you know, keep it on you as hard as they normally do. 
Uh, his special version, which is quarter circle with S, fires three key blasts. Which is just like if you were to do it yourself, except it leaves you free to run in and follow it up. And you get a combo off of that. Pretty nice attack. Because you can do it your own and, you know, vanish into combo, whatever it is. And you can have your partner do it and then still get your combo that way. That's a pretty versatile tool. Because that way if you land at the end of a combo really far away from you do this one and it covers your approach. From really far ranges away. Whereas the middle, the, the medium version of it can do that, but it takes them a second to get in front of them and they usually just jump over it by that point. This one I feel is much more effective to just get in there. To, co to close the distance on your opponent again. Uh, and if you do the special one in the air, 17 comes in with a barrier, which is also kind of interesting. There's a lot of really high-level metagame stuff involved in this character. You really have to understand why you would do things in certain situations. Uh, the main reason for that being is you can't reflect while you're in the air. Reflect, it beats almost everything. You can use 17 to barrier an attack and then punish them as they land with the 2H or whatever it might be. And this would be your own barrier. She has down down S and she has her own barrier, which absorbs damage or blocks damage. And if you do successfully absorb an attack, she can cancel right into a super. Let's see if I can record that real quick. Uh, repeat attack, heavy. How fast is he gonna do it? He's doing it so fast that it's hitting my recovery of the second barrier. Now you can see how it goes right through me and it doesn't do anything. And I'm able to cancel that right out into my super. So if they do something right at me and it gets barriered, I can go right into my super attack and hit them with it. You should be able to do pretty much the same thing off of 17s. It's just in the air. I wish you would slow down, Jesus. Like, how am I supposed to work with this? No, it's, it's really hard to, to set that up correctly. It is very situational. You have to understand why you would want to, you know, keep the opponent off you in the air when you call it. It's very particular, but when it does get used correctly, you have that ability to just shut them down altogether. And just again, it looks like this. Down, down, S. You can also do this in the air, like I said, when you cannot use your normal reflect. Because your normal reflect will generally stop anything. You know, you can reflect level threes, you can knock anything away from you, but you can't do it in the air. You can barrier while you're in the air and cause your opponent to whiff that way. Uh, her next special move is the Destructo Disc that she learned from her husband. Works the exact same way. Curlin does the same thing, throws one Destructo Disc. You can aim it high for jumpers and aim it low for people trying to dash through it or whatever. That's about it. You can't really, like, put it wherever you want it. It's just upwards a little bit if you think they're going to jump. Uh, it's durable enough that it'll negate a Kamehameha type attack. It doesn't get dashed right through it. And just like those, you can vanish behind it and, and combo into it that way. Like that. So it works like the general special projectile attacks. Not all that different. It's a little bit slower, but you can aim it. So just think of it that way. Pretty useful, especially, you know, in the fact that you can throw normal key blasts, and you can also have 17 throw normal key blasts and do it that way. Pretty versatile. So when you're far away, you do have the options of all these things to start throwing at them. If they think you're going to just throw normal key blasts and they want to super dash right through it, you throw the destructo disc and it'll hit them. It'll stop that super dash. So that's a pretty cool arsenal of things to have at that distance. Even though the main goal is just for you to get back in close. You're not defenseless all the way out there. You want to be closer and that really helps cover you having a, a, a unique projectile game to do it. I think that works out pretty well. So 18 supers are pretty straightforward again. Energy wave just looks like this. She teleports directly above them and blasts them downward. This beam will go all the way down to the ground regardless of how high she is, but she will not go all the way in the air above them. For example, I do an attack like this. Well, that one did work. In a lot of cases, it won't. She won't appear all the way above them depending on what you do it. By and large, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, more or less, once they're in a combo like that, you can just do this and she'll appear just fine, but there are limits to it. If an opponent on the ground is dashing side to side quickly, it will miss them because it's not going to track that well. She appears above where they were, not where they're going, so it can miss that way. And she does not cover the full screen. She only goes about halfway. 
But as long as she's less than halfway away from them, she'll go right above to where they are. So it's pretty effective in that regard. You are mostly going to use it to end combos. It's not great to like throw a dashing opponent back off of you. It can be, it's just very particular. Most of them's like, most swoopers aren't like this and they don't move the character out of the way before attacking. So it does have those little bit of quirks to it. If you have me backed into a corner and they're coming out, you can do that. You'll get out of the way and throw some energy down. So it's a little bit unique, but its purpose is pretty much the same as all the other supers. Ending combos, getting the situation after it. Her level three, which is just the opposite direction, is about a half screen to three quarter screen. Again, you see full screen, it won't reach. Not quite. She calls in 17 and they both do a symmetrical assault on the opponent like this. Kick him up in the air and the bulk of the damage comes from that. And like other level 3s, you get that knockdown at the end. Uh, the only real thing that's unusual about this is if Krillin is on your team and he's still alive, it'll replace 17 in the animation with Krillin. They'll do it together. He'll do the blue Kamehameha at the same time as she does that. So it's just a little Easter egg sort of thing. Doesn't change any property of the move. It is what it is. Moves horizontally and covers about 3 quarters of the screen. Uh, in the air, it will not go up and down very well. Just a little bit, but if they're drastically above you, it will not work. Like this, in that case, where I kick him in the air, I went right underneath him. And in fact, in some cases, you have to be kind of peculiar with your timing if you're going to do it in the air, because it just moves in such a predictable straight line, it doesn't vary super well. But I think most level threes in general are best used to just catch your opponent coming at you. As soon as you think they're going to attack, you use your invincibility and hit it with a raw. I think that's better than most combo applications of a level three. And it fits that role the same as anything else. Nothing unusual there. Start up invincibility, big chunk of damage, and all of that. So that is most of 18's special moves and how you'd use them. Uh, the command throws are there to mix up your pressure a little bit, to keep them from just waiting on a, an overhead and block it. They'll get thrown if they get blocked. And you can spend some meter to convert those into combo. Pretty powerful tool for an opponent who's not ready to deal with it. Uh, the 17 assists, several different ways to use it, but far and away the medium version stands out as the rest. It works on airborne opponents, so you can use it in combos, you can use it in pressure, everywhere. Definitely the best one that she has. The anti-assist version is interesting, definitely has uses, it's just it's up to them to fall into the trap rather than you using it on purpose. And the special version of it has a really good long range cover for you to get back in and resume the pressure if you ever happen to lose it. Destructo disc, straightforward enough projectile, not super fast but can be aimed upward a little bit and can combo if you vanish behind it. The barrier works for stopping a pit bull and letting you get out of trouble. You throw up the barrier, block their attack, and do a super, and they're pretty much helpless because they're whiffing the animation still. So just a more advanced version of Reflect, you can also do in the air. And then a re level one and a level three super that are pretty straightforward, nothing out in the ordinary. So when you look at the list, it doesn't seem like this character does a lot that anyone else doesn't do, you know? Uh, unusual command grab that doesn't seem that good, a projectile that doesn't seem that good, and average super. It's like, what does this character do? But when you start to learn exactly the things that 17 can accomplish as an assist, it's kind of amazing. She basically has a third assist that can come on the screen at any time to continue offense and to guard her own attacks, but the potential for 17 in particular is even better than the rest. So we'll go over that a little bit later in some strategy section, how to use 17, but once you see it in action, you'll be amazed at how nasty it can really get when you've mastered this art. All right, some combos for Android 18 generally work like anyone else. The 2M, 5M jump cancel stuff is all of there. As I mentioned, her 2H in the air, you can chase after it, but you cannot jump cancel. So she's not able to squeeze in extra heavies like some characters do, but it's not that big a deal. She is able to squeeze in light, medium, light at every possible leg in the combo. So she gets the damage that way too, but most of it comes from using 17 in creative ways. Uh, the most straightforward combo that anyone can do would look like this. So that is the 2M, 5M, crouching medium, standing medium, into jump cancel. I jump in the air and do light, medium, light, and then the 2H to kick him up in the air and super dash to follow it. And then I do another light, medium, light, jump cancel that, and then I just do the auto combo, light, light, light. So that gives you the hard knockdown into the slide at that point. You could also right there do another light, medium, light into 2H, and then like a super, for example, that looks like this. this 
Oh, I missed it. Sometimes it gets a little peculiar when you squeeze in all those extra light hits. It's not really necessary. It just gives you a little bit extra damage. But like, say I'll drop a light hit out and show you what it looks like. That way. So one light, medium, light, and then two H into chase. Another light, medium, light, jump cancel. Another light, medium, light, two H into super. That's basically what I'm doing there. And if you feel like you're not getting the timing well enough, cut out one of this as the second light attack. Just do light medium and jump cancel right there. And it also helps in a lot of situations, instead of light medium, to just do light light. Because of the way the auto combo system in the game works, it makes it much more consistent. Like I'll just do a 2M5M and then just do light medium heavy in the air. See how my heavy misses them? It goes right underneath them. The light medium connect just fine, but the heavy whiffs because I'm too low. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but instead of pressing light, medium, heavy, I'm just gonna do the auto combo, light, light, light. And it hits every time. When you do, you notice the difference right away between the manual light, medium, and the auto light, light, is that they, the character goes a lot higher in the air and just produces a much more consistent combo. So you can use that to your advantage, especially late in the combo. Instead of trying to end with a light, medium, heavy, just do light, 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 and it is a thousand times more consistent. And it also works for other segments in the air, too. You can just do light, light, and your, your consistency will be a lot higher than doing it manually. Just keep in mind, you, as soon as you do the next light, it'll cause a heavy automatically. You don't get your little variations in there. So it's best to learn how to do all the manual combos the way they're supposed to be done. But certain legs you see, oh, I might as well just do auto combo because it works better. So again, the basic combo like this. Light, medium, light. And then chase, light, medium, light. And then jump cancel into auto combo. Pretty straightforward, you can do a super there, you can do a level three there, whatever you want. And most characters have that ability. Um, <clears throat> the thing that really sets 17 apart is that she can use, or 18 apart, is she can use 17, say after one of these two H's. You can do that kind of anywhere in the combo, as long as you haven't used up like seven, eight, nine hits or anything like that. Uh, so I'll just do the first leg again, light, medium, light into two H, but instead of super dashing, I'll just do 17. Like that, and he hits you back down to the ground. Now, this has a ton of cool uses, but they're not easy to figure out or learn how to do. If you notice where I am at the end of that combo, how far apart we are. I, seven, 18 lands from where she called, where 17 knocks them diagonally downward almost across the screen. The distance is really far apart. Um, this has its uses, like I said, but you need to know how to do it correctly. That's one of the things that makes the Vegeta assist so powerful, is look at the angle that he covers. That's perfect. 17 knocks him down right into that assist. That becomes kind of easy. So once you learn the ins and outs of 17, you can actually do some really, really cool stuff with it. But uh, in that case, you'll also notice too, when you call 17 in the air, 18 stays in the air for a little bit and he can actually hit the ground before her. She has to float to the ground. So sometimes during 17's animations, 18, you see how I land in front of him by, by dashing in the air. 18 stays airborne, so she can still dash, but it's just a, you have to learn how her timing works and when she hits the ground. But you could just do a couple of little variations like this. Oh, I missed. So that, that goes back to the whole horizontal movement thing. It doesn't cover very well. There it goes. You catch level three early in the combo that way. So you can do several things with it, but 17's real best asset is being able to knock them back down to the ground into an assist or into any other kind of pickup to get more combo out of it. Um, I'll try to cover, I'll show you like the most advanced things that I know how to do with 17 and they're not easy, but eventually you'll figure it out. Uh, just some basic other things first, like catching a super dash, how you want to combo off of that. It depends on your angle. If you say do one of these, you have to go upwards with them. You'll be able to squeeze some more hit ins. If you're on the ground, you won't, but you can basically just do stuff like that. Light, medium, jump, cancel, light, medium and then 2H into super. That tends to work pretty well. For all those combos where you can't do the full thing, you have to just catch them out of midair, work on that. Light, medium, jump cancel, light, medium, 2H into super. And eventually you'll figure out once you have the angles right and the practice, you can squeeze extra light hits in there or whatever it might be. 
Um, she can other, also do some interesting things with 17 by calling him super early in the combo without even going into the air first. You see how that went? That I just did the 2M5M thing, and then I did a 2H launcher, which you normally don't do. But as soon as I did that, I called 17 right away. And since I'm still in the air, I just dashed off screen, but I know where I am, so I dashed. And by the time I landed, I was able to hit them with an airborne medium kick. So you'll see, if you look at combo videos online, you'll see them be able to do this, call 17 and he smacks them back to the ground, while 18 air dashes, hits them in the air, lands, and then can do another standing medium and launch them back in the air again. It's really hard, it's really peculiar. Like that. The, the, once you connect that, you can jump cancel and go right back into the combo again. It's just really difficult to learn how to do it. The only thing that I can try to figure out is once I hit 17, I dash right away and then I wait as long as I can to do the medium in the air. If you sit there long enough and practice, you'll see how that works. But you can generally only do that off of this grounded 2H. It, out in the air, it won't work, it'll be too far apart. So if you put 17 really early in the combo like this, you can do it better that way. Um, it's just, it's very finicky. Sometimes I think it's even better to do it that way. Instead of the usual pickup, the 2M, 5M, do it the other way. 5M, 2M. Because just that little bit, where you do that first, she pushes them in the air, and if you do that last, they don't go into the air as high. That little bit of a difference can affect your ability to connect that combo. So it's something you would have to practice, but it is an option. There it is. So it's there. If you want to learn how to practice it, you can definitely have it. But there's not a huge difference if you're going to hit them with a 2M, 5M or whatever it is to just do the whole combo you're used to anyway. There's not too many reasons to do something that's that difficult when you can just do the full three loops into the combo and super and all that stuff anyway. That does work out in the open, so it does have some advantages, and you can find some creative ways to throw assists in there and rack up the damage that way. That is not something I'm familiar with yet, how to do multiple assist combos at the highest level. I just know a couple of them and how to do like the most basic thing with it. Uh, let me show you a combo in the corner using just 17, which is a much easier way to re-combo, so to speak, than the one I just showed you. Uh, I'll do the basic opener, the 2M5M, and then in the air, light, medium, light, into 2H. And at that point, I'll do 17, the medium 17, but I'll delay it a tiny little bit. And then as soon as he delivers the second impact, I do another 2M5M on the ground. So I'm basically starting the combo over at that point. I 18 will have landed and can do whatever she wants again right as the opponent gets there and you do another 2M5M jump cancel stuff. So it basically looks exactly like the same combo twice, but they're going to run out of hit stun, so you can't just do this all day. So again, I'm going to do 2M5M jump into the big 2H and then a 17. Just that part. Looks like that, right? And hits them back down to the ground, you see them tech. What I'm gonna do is time it just right after that second hit, that downward hit from 17, into another 2M5M. Like that. And that 2M5M maintains the same property, I can jump and follow them into the air and do light, medium, light, light, medium, light stuff, whatever it might be. In this case, the only difference is if you do the auto combo, light, medium, heavy, you don't get that slide. Because the last time, you have to do a 2H, basically, at some point in your combo. A 2H from the ground and then chase them in order to get that. Like this. There, you see how they slide? Since I did that in the combo, but I landed, I lose that state. So basically, there's no way to end with that skid, but you could just super the old-fashioned way. Oops. Missed it. Just waited a little bit too long. I think that's the key. The delay right there. You have to delay 17 just right to allow 18 to hit the ground. And then you have to hit the 2M5M just after that last hit to get it right. It's not that hard, but it's a little difficult to get used to at first because you're not even on screen when you're trying to act. So just keep it in mind to do, after you do the 2H, you want to delay 17 a little bit. And then as soon as he delivers the second hit, do your 2M5M. You'll get it eventually. But again, I delayed too long. I'm not perfect with it. 
far from it, but I do know how to do it, and you know, every so often it comes out in a match when I need it. Too quickly that time, I didn't, I didn't let them close, get close to the ground. But that's the concept for using general assists with this character, is you hit them up in the air and use 17 to knock them back down. And I'll show you how to do it with a Goku assist, basically. A little bit easier to do. So that looks like that. I do the same thing, a normal combo starter, light, medium, light, then I do the 2H in the Android 17. And once I did that, I called out Goku, who covers the entire bottom of the screen with death, and as soon as they land on that beam, I super dash and follow them the rest of the way. I'll show you again. Oh, I waited too long. As soon as you call a 17, basically hit your assist. That's the general rule. The time it takes for 17 to hit them is about the time it takes for your partner to come in. Like that. The super, the, the beam will push them to the corner and I can super dash and get there right in time. If, if you happen to have it where your like back is to the wall and you have the whole screen to work with, it might not work because your super dash can't get there in time. But in general, it does. Uh, you can also do this with Vegeta and the same concept exists. You're just going to super dash and follow up that way. Just like that, you super dash and land on them. The only thing that sucks about this is in either case, you will not be able to land on the ground in time and jump up again. You basically have to use your super dash to keep the combo at that point. There's no way for you to really land. Like that. And Vegeta's assist is the best one in the game for this kind of stuff because it holds them in place for you to combo, but I can't do anything about it as 18, you don't land on the ground in time. Everybody else can basically just walk up to them and jump again. 18 just doesn't work like that. But the 17, the, the versatility of 17, I think makes up for it. So that's how it would work in a typical assist situation. As soon as you call the 17, call it out and then super dash to catch them like that. That's pretty much the extent of how I know how to use assists in your combos. If you're in the corner, it's a lot easier. The problem with doing this combo in general is the distance that 17 hits them away can be hard for you to catch up. If you're in the corner, it's a lot easier because they're not going anywhere. And that's where I think it gets easier to also use other assists like 16 or Gohan that are just single hits up close. That works really well. As soon as 17 knocks them back down to the ground, you hit it and then you combo again. So there are a million things you can do with your assists in combos, spend more meter for vanishes and blah, blah, blah. I just have not mastered the sort yet. So I know how to do what I'm comfortable with doing, right? The three legs of the combo, knowing I'm gonna be able to end with the skid and do the super there, or if I get near the corner, I can cut it early, do 17 and recombo, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of all I really have mastered at this point, and I couldn't tell you how to do anything beyond that. Just the basic combo. into the hard knockdown, or you can level three, you know, just like anybody else can. I wouldn't generally want to right here, the only difference is the knockdown. When they recover from this level three, they cannot tech right there. That's the best reason for level threes. But that combo that anybody else can do, uh, just three legs of the jumping light medium stuff and into super. I'll use that most of the time just to con and I don't even end with the super. I'll just do the knockdown into the slide and then follow them up and start building meter that way instead of spending it every time. And when you get when you start a combo in the corner, I do have the 17 thing at my disposal. Like that. It's just sometimes I don't get it, you know? And they don't realize that I dropped the combo until it's too late. So you can kind of just, you know, throw out another 2H while they're still in the air and stuff like that. Your offense isn't over just because the combo dropped. Just, you know, oh shit, I dropped the combo. Call out assist and do that stuff, you know? It still works. So when I know I get to the corner, I have a little bit of a fancy 17 combo. And other than that, I'm not really looking for too much else. If I catch the super dash, I just keep it simple. Light, medium, light, medium. That way. That's all I ever really do. And if I'm feeling frisky about it and I happen to have a good assist, like Goku or Vegeta, I'll start thinking about doing that stuff too. And get all the way into the corner that way. Still have a DHC left. 5,600 right there for what, two bars? Just by using one assist. So that the possibility is all there. 
and you can look at combo videos on YouTube all day and see the wild stuff people are doing. But I think this is where you start. You know, you have to understand the concept of using your chase in combo, how you use the heavies and where they work. But basically the, that hard knockdown property only results if you have a 2H in your combo. So for basic things like this, like a, like a super dash, you're not going to get that. They tech right away. You cannot get that slide in every combo. So once you realize that, you might want to go for a different option in the air rather than just letting them tech and hit the ground. So once you understand the tools of the combo system and how they all work, I think then you can start to try to figure out what you become a little bit more comfortable with doing and then work into some crazy stuff. Um, the only other thing that you would need to be aware of is how to combo into snapbacks. Pretty much any character can hit them with a heavy in the air and a vanish and throw them like that. Like that. Any heavy attack, and then you vanish immediately afterward, and before you land, you just do Dragon Rush, and it works almost 100% of the time, and you snap them back that way. So I think that's an important tool to have. Uh, you can do that in almost any situation anyway, but you can also do it like this if you wanted to. There's one. Use your 17 right away. And the combo that I showed you where you can do the 17 early and then air dash under it, that same thing. If you do 17 super early, you can use a Dragon Rush right there to snap back too. But again, if you're already landing with the 2M, 5M and stuff, there's not really too many reasons to not just do a full combo and then snap them back like that, right? But it's there. It is there to use 17 early on and then get the most damage out of an early combo, so to speak. But you don't have to. You can just stick your entire life with the 2M, 5M jump stuff if you want. No problem there. And 17 or 18 can do that pretty well. 17 adds another layer to that stuff. And then the assists from other characters add a much bigger layer. So with practice, you'll figure it all out and get a little bit more comfortable in time how to do the best combos. But I think the most difficult one that you want to start learning how to do is the corner version. The sooner you get used to doing that, the better. Because you can really chunk some damage off of that without even having spent any bar. That can be really useful. And once you've learned that, then I think you're on the way to learning everything else. So if you're ready to take on an advanced combo, start with that one. Like that. That's the one that you really want to learn. So little by little, take it in pieces, learn how to do basic jump cancels, learn how to do chases, and then continue learning all the good stuff as you go. Start incorporating them to matches little by little, start testing out stuff, and then see what you can do. Just, you know, get comfortable with it and then try to push a little bit more. So the last thing that I want to talk about is how you put these unique tools into your pressure game. And as I said, that basically centers around 17. That's your best tool for doing this sort of thing. Did I? What? Oh, I hit him low. <laughs> Standing guard off. There, he's just blocking left and right, doing all this stuff and calling his assists. Blockity block block. That's going to happen a lot in the game. And 17 gives you your own option to do that. The only difference is it's not super fast. Like, if you do it out of a heavy kick like that, they know heavy kick is a good opportunity for them to go. You're not going to be able to get anything off of it. But there's always another option. You can do heavy kick into down heavy kick, which is a frame trap. If they try to blow that up, they're going to get hit by that 2H. But if they block that 2H, you're extremely vulnerable. They can do anything they want in that case. Your only option is to cancel into a special from the air. You'll see Gohans do this with uh, the multi-kick, right? They'll do this in the air and then multi-kick on the way down. 17's, or 18's real choice is only to call a 17, and it's not super fast to do. She can get hit out of the air in the meantime. But nonetheless, if the opponent's not ready to start attacking stuff like this, you can get just a litany of options off of them. Call a 17, air dash, cross them up, all of those other things. All sorts of things you can do. 17 just adds another layer to that pressure. Have all these characters on screen at once, just doing whatever you want to do. So 17 rounds that out a little bit, and especially because you can do cool things like 17 from the air. You're in the air, you call 17, and you can still air dash out of it, which gives you the potential to cross them up 
while 17 is hitting them from the front. Also very nice to have. You can do that with other assists too. If you're out in the field, you know, you can call a Goku and jump over them or whatever it might be. Like that. They're not going to get unblockables. The game will stop that from happening. But 17 also gives you that nice little bit of there. Right there would have been a good situation. You're in the air. You can still air dash and make them think twice about what they're going to do next. On top of all your block, block, block it into command throw stuff. Or throw a Goku out and then command throw. Just like that, you know. They don't realize that it happened until it's too late sometimes. There's not a real indicator like there is on Dragon Rush. There's no green ring. There's a little bit of a startup that they can't see, but not a ton. Especially if you're doing, you know, one of these things in the middle of the air. All of a sudden, they didn't realize what was happening and they get thrown. So in addition to being able to do your 17 stuff, you've got the command throw to throw on top of all of that. Another Vegeta, and then throw, and they weren't ready for it, right? So there's a million things you can do for pressure in this game. Just like that. So 17, I think, just adds another layer on top of that. Just like I said, it adds a layer to everything else. But I think his best usage is to help you get in. It reminds me the most of Melia from Guilty Gear. If you ever see every combo that she ends in the air, she smacks them back down to the ground, and she throws that energy ring around them, which limits their options when they stand up. They stand up, and if they were to, you know, press a button or whatever, they get hit. So they kind of have to just stand there and block and wait for her mix-up, whether it's a cross-up, overhead, or whatever it might be. That's what 17 reminds me the most of. Is when you have them in the air, you hit them back down to the ground, and in some cases say, well, you can do this super, right? The way this ends, the opponent is on the ground, but 18 is still in midair. She floats back down to the ground to meet them up. So what I tend to do is if I end the combo with this, on my way to the ground, I'll call out another 17 and then air dash. Before they're even back on the screen, I've already got a 17 out, and I'm planning my next offense. I think that 17 already being on the way kind of keeps them from doing anything wild to get out of trouble. And same if I happen to end something, you know, on the ground. If I'm like this distance away, I'll throw the 17 out and then follow it in. It's not infallible because there is an instant for him, you know, just watch the time from when I hit it to when he actually makes impact. It's like a half a second there, right? So if they happen to do, you know, if Android 16 happened to do his big dumb 5H, he would blast right through you. So it's not infallible, but it is just like a nice way to cover your entry and then go into normal assist for that stuff and then keep going like that. So that's, if you're familiar at all with Amelia and Guilty Gear, that's the way I tend to use 17 most, is to trap them on their wake-up situation, keep them from doing anything wild while I go back onto offense, mix up overheads, assists, whatever it might be. And especially true at longer ranges where you have this one to cover your approach. You have the, the key blast version of 17, lets you get in that way from far away. They can, again, beat it, but I think it's just, this game is a matter of finding ways to beat that pressure or to not beat it, right? So you might as well just use everything that you have to try to keep them guessing for a while your assist, whatever it might be. So that's another way to do it, and I think 17 is really good to open your offense in that situation. In the middle of stuff, he's not as fast in general as your other assists, and he doesn't just obliterate the whole screen like Vegeta or Goku do, right? He just delivers a couple hits. Just enough to mess with their timing. If they were thinking about, you know, hitting you with something, it might screw them up. Or like in the, in the situation where you end with this super, right, and they know you're in the air, so they know if anything you do is going to land on them, they can just 2-H and hit you with its invincible anti-air, right? So just like any other assist can stop that from happening. If, you know, I'm landing in the air and they're getting ready to 2-H, I just call it a Goku and he stops them from doing that. I can also do the same thing with 17 on my way to the ground. Call out a 17 so that he starts attacking them before they can 2-H me and lets me land safely with my offense again. So I think 17 is a really, really good opener as well as being able to add a different quirk to your pressure in general. Um, a couple other things you might want to pay attention to is how you confirm. You already have to learn in the middle of your pressure stuff what happens when I catch them with the low, what happens when I catch them with the heavy, what you're supposed to do after that. So 17 is no different really. You just have to learn what your confirms are. Uh, the basic light attack one, which I think you're probably never going to use, because the medium is better. Once you do that, when your only choice really is the super. You don't get too much else off of it. And I don't think it's even that great. The medium one is really, it's just so much better, it really is. Unless there's something I don't know about it, it's the light version is faster, invincibility or blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I think the medium outclasses it entirely. 
And if the medium hits, you can basically just dash in and do your own 5H. See how they do it kind of symmetrically? I think that's sort of cool. They both do the break Vegeta's arm kick, and you can get a combo that way and chase them in. So, in the middle of all your pressuring going on, if he happens to hit right away and you can feel it coming, you can do a 2H. But in general, with 17 is going to connect with this, he's going to push them farther away. Even if you're up close when it comes out, see the distance it covers, you really sort of have to dash with it. Right by the time he hits them, they're half a screen apart. So when you're using the pressure combo and you start doing a 17, you really got to dash in and follow it. Make sure you can connect afterwards. Because you can super dash and get there, but it's a little tougher. The further, the faster they move away from you, the harder it gets. So if you're paying attention, you throw out that, that assist, you want to dash in and hit him with a 5H and combo that way. So keep that in mind. If that 17 does make contact, you want to immediately dash up and try the 5H to continue from there. If you're in the corner, you can obviously do different things because they're not going to fall away from you. But most of the time, during pressure out in the open, you're thinking about dash 5H. Um, and again, in the corner, I'll just show you if you do the same thing, your pressure into this guy, you can do a 2H that way. Because they're not going anywhere, you can just do the one up in the air launcher and not have to worry about the distance. So I think, in general, you get a little bit more off of launchers that go in the air because you can squeeze some extra hits before they fall on the ground, that's all. Um, and the other one to be aware of is if this connects, you can actually run up and do the 2H all on, on your own. There's enough juggle in the air that once you run in, 2H will still reach them. Like that. So you're using that one to generally cover your approach. Uh, you throw this one out and you get in on them. As soon as you see it hit, you can do 2H and get a full combo right there. Otherwise, if it didn't connect, you go right into your jab stuff and go from there. So I think that's the bulk of the, the basic strategy things that 18 needs to employ. Using the command throw in the middle of all your crazy assist stuff, whatever it might be, just to keep them honest, to keep them aware that that exists. They can't just block all your options because there is a throw there. You use that one, one, to add that extra layer, and then two, you use your 17 to keep the pressure even higher, as well as to cover your advances and retreats. Most of the time when you're pressuring, you call your assists up and close, it just stops them from doing whatever. 17, I feel like he excels at helping you get in, or even helping you get out, if that were the case, right? So you can throw projectiles at them or whatever. 17, because I feel like you can do him whenever you need to, is a little bit more useful in that regard. The other assists have a cooldown. 17 you can kind of do whenever you want to. Even in the middle of this one. If 17 is already out there, you can just call a different 17 and he'll blink out of problems. Not all, well, at least off of this one. That's the only time he's going to be on the screen for five minutes is when you do that one. So you can, you know, during your approach, throw that out and leave it there and then call in the medium one whenever you need to. Just like that and it'll be there. So that's kind of a nice thing too, just to have behind you at all times, that anti assist ready to go, and whenever you need it, you switch into that one. So 17 covers both your coming and going options and really just makes everything unfold. It's another free assist in combos, in offense, and on defense. So I hope that explains the character in at least a little bit of a, a logical way to help you understand why she does what she does and how it can be effective with such a limited looking move list. And that's because the versatility of having 17 is sometimes immeasurable. So I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments below for things that I might not have talked about that are worth mentioning, extra combo stuff that I might be interested in, anything like that, go for it. Leave a message down below. Uh, please subscribe to the channel via that button. And you can follow me live on twitch.tv slash mastermind6000 for this game or anything else that I play, all the other stuff. Uh, so again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.